All right, let's get started here. All right. Okay. You ready to go, Scotty? Yeah. All right. So welcome uh, to our webinar. Um, today, your presenters, as you can see, um, I'm Chris Salmers. Forgot an S on the end, but that's okay. I'll take that. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. No problem. Um, uh, today, doing most of the pre presenting, as Eric said, uh, will be Scott Ellery, our application engineer. We also have the director of products, Eric Van Essen. Uh, he's been um, our anchor man for for Pooh Works, as most of you folks know him now. And uh, I'm the the guy I call myself the advanced technology advocate. Um, I help you with the sales end of things and implementing and uh, giving you quotes and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Uh, so uh, just uh, a quick idea about uh, Javelin Technologies and why you might want to do business with us and, and, and purchase cool works from us. Um, we're the largest uh, Canadian reseller of SolidWorks and um, niche applications. We have six uh, locations across the country. We have more than 80 folks. and. Um, I believe we have over 4,000 customers now. And uh, if you go to the next slide, Scotty, you'll see that we have uh, locations all the way across Canada with our headquarters in Oakville. And what Javelin Technologies really does, um, and, and you'll see this, is we provide automation based on the SolidWorks engine. And we develop niche applications that, that fit into these very special industries, and one of them being uh, the pool industry. So we've developed an application that provides a high level of automation to really help people get the job done better. And we have so much knowledge and, and, and industry expertise in writing code and supporting um, these NISA, niche applications to really make our customers successful. That's really what we do best, right? So again, um, all our folks are certified. We have. Um, over 20 engineers on staff. We were founded in 1997 and we're a solely uh, a Canadian owned and operated company since 1997. So we're really positioned well in the industry to help you uh, move ahead and, and become more efficient with your process and, and you know build more liners and covers and make more money. All right, let's go to the next slide. So the way we do this is we, we have what's called a track and it's a circle. And really, it focuses on, on the company as a whole, just not delivering a point solution. Um, the first thing is we, we can improve your people through training and, and mentoring. We can equip your business with the latest 3D technology, and you'll see that today through Poolworks and, and our bundled mm -hmm. software. And really, uh, you know, implementing a new, uh, a new process or a new technology, you need to, to get the process figured out. And every company does things slightly different. That's where we help you out with that, is really working with you to, to define your process and, and automate on specific needs. And then finally, we can introduce you to new innovative uh, manufacturing techniques that you may not have known about previously. So we cover the gamut, not just delivering the solution, but giving you the, the full support you need to become successful in your business. All right, Scotty. So, uh, uh, Scott, I'll take this slide now. Uh, the, the, you'll be at the helm here. Go ahead, my friend. Sure. Okay, so uh, so just a, kind of an overview of what Poolworks is and what it's about. Um, so, Poolworks, uh, it runs on uh, the SolidWorks, uh, which is a kind of a main engine of Poolworks. So it's built on top of the SolidWorks platform. Um, which is one of the best-selling, uh, again, and, and most widely used CAD platform on the planet. Um, and it takes advantage of a, a lot of the, the parametrics and the functionality of SolidWorks. Uh, where Javelin comes in with Poolworks uh, is the automation side. So we're there to help get you to that, that liner or that cover to your marker um, as quickly as possible. Right? So we do all the automation, um, and Exact Flat helps with all of the flattening, uh, and getting that marker out to your uh, to your cutter, so it, it, it uses its advanced flattening algorithms to uh, to make sure that you get the right flat pattern the first time and uh, and get your marker out. Correct. One thing I'll just quickly add there is we had uh, some great meetings recently with Exact Flat that we laid out a plan of uh, the next service pack of Exact Flat Two, which is of course a, a bit an important piece of the uh, the bundle. Um, and there, uh, so we are working towards a service pack in the fall time frame in time for next uh, off season. 
um, was, and we've uh, helped direct some of the enhancements that we want to see in there that are specifically going to be helping the pool industry. So stay tuned on that. We'll probably have another webinar on what's new pool works in exact flat um, in the fall time frame. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, so uh, one of the newest uh, enhancements in Poolworks um, is that we've actually given it a new name. So uh, we wanted to come up with a name that was a little bit more centric to what the software does and, uh, and how it's being used in the industry. Uh, so what was called Poolworks uh, is now going to be called Pool Pattern Pro. So it's a little bit more descriptive uh, of what it's actually accomplishing. Um, and it's got a sweet alliteration to it. Yeah. I'm liking, I'm, I'm liking the Pool Pattern Pro. Yeah, I mean, obviously the operative word being pattern. You know, we wanted to, to differentiate from, um, from well, the non-descriptive, really what we were before, before we were more associated with SolidWorks. But we're just, you know, it wasn't as important as what are we actually doing? Patterns, right? So patterns of liners, patterns of covers. That's what, what, what our business is uh, for this product. Absolutely. So just uh, the agenda for today, uh, we're just going to start with uh, going over the Pool Pattern Pro process. <laughs> that didn't That's really a mouthful. Yeah, that is, that is, that is a mouthful. Uh, so just for anybody who may not have seen uh, Pool Pattern Pro before, um, or you know maybe we just want a little bit of an update on, uh, on the process for creating a liner um, and creating uh, a cover and how fast it can be. Uh, then we're just gonna we're gonna get into some of the improvements that we've made uh, and some of the enhancements uh, for the the next generation of Pool Pattern Pro. So uh, some of the liner and cover workflows, uh, some of the in uh, sorry the template automation, uh, and uh, some new exciting documentation enhancements as well uh, on the on the drawing side. Just before you get started, Scotty, um, for the the folks that have, that aren't current users of Poolworks. You will pool Pattern Pro, you pool. mean, right, Chris? I know you mean exactly. Pool Pattern Pro. <laughs> the triple P, yeah. You, you won't see all the different ways we can create a pool. We have about four or five, five or six different ways we can create a, um, a liner. And what we'll do is we'll circle back with you folks and uh, do a, a private um, presentation for you to, to see in depth all the different ways to do. We just can't cover all the information today, but there are many different ways to create a pool and, and a liner design, right? So we wanted to give you an upfront uh, overview just of, of, you know, one of the ways in, and, and just the, the sort of process of creating a pool. So Scotty will give you a good, good one there, but we'll circle back with everybody just to touch base and make sure everybody understands the complete power of uh, Pool Pattern Pro. Thank you. All righty. So let's uh, let's start it off with the uh, the Pool Pattern Pro process. So we'll just jump into SolidWorks here. We're going to start up a, uh, a new pool, and right off the bat, we've got a number of different options. So we can use uh, Pool Measure Profiles, which are CSV files. We can manually enter our data, our AV points. We can use templates. Uh, we can even use other pool patterns that we already have. Right. So we're just going to start with a pool uh, Pool Measure Profile here for a liner. And you can see it automatically fills in all of our project files. We can put in some properties. It has all of our AB points already. We get a full preview of our pool uh, and our liner information. So we can see all of our shrink and scale factors. Uh, we can see all of our shallow deep end. And if we just hit create pool, it's going to start the magic. So this is the automation that Pool, uh, pool Pattern Pro is, uh, <laughs> is bringing to the table, right? We can quickly create that, uh, the pool liner geometry, right? In just a few seconds, we've got all of our geometry. Right? We can manipulate this using our SOLIDWORKS tool. So say we wanted to put a break line at the end here, maybe we've got you know, quite a bit of stretch. You know, we can quickly add some uh, geometry, add a few constraints to it, maybe make that parallel and make that tangent. And we can split this surface up. Right? Easy, very easy. Right? So now we've kind of separated out into uh, a few panel pieces. We can go into exact flat and we can create our pieces. We just select faces, hit enter on our keyboard, and it's going to create the pieces for us, right? So that's one piece, two pieces, and then our, our final piece over there. So we can accept that. You're going to notice it only shows the pieces that we've selected, and then we can go over and we can convert this. So what this is going to do is exact flat is actually analyzing the geometry, uh, and it's also going to allow us, uh, once it's analyzed, to apply a material to our geometry, which is going to uh, essentially 
tell Exact Flat, hey, you know, this is the material that we're going to use, um, just so that you can take that into account when it starts to flatten. So you can see here we've got materials. In this case, we can just apply a liner material, right? You can see it gets color coded, so we know we've we've applied the proper uh, material. And here we're in the flattener. So this is Exact Flat's bread and butter, right? So we can uh, mesh the part, right? So you can see kind of where the stress is, are, and where the sag is, and then we can hit that optimize button, right? So you can see now in real time, it's actually optimizing our material. So it's trying to work out any sag, it's trying to work out any stretch, just essentially trying to get as much energy out of the pattern as possible, right? So you can see it optimizing on the right there, right? And, uh, and essentially what this is going to do is this is going to make sure that we have, you know, that perfectly fitting liner the first time. So we don't have to go through any iterations. Um, you know, we don't have to do any testing out. Um, we're doing it all on the software side so that when we actually go to cut this, uh, you know, that we have the best possible fitting liner. All right, so we're almost done there. There we go. So our optimization is complete. So we can go hit head and we can hit OK. And what that's going to do is essentially exact flat is going to update all of our pieces with our new flattened pieces. There it goes there, right? So now that new flattening has been taken into account. Let's just turn off some of our highlights here. And just to make it a little easier to see. Uh, and we can go over to our pattern view. So this is our flat panel view. Okay, so this is going to show us our three flattened pieces that we just flattened. And now we can go through and we can start organizing this. Right? So we can straighten this out. Maybe we want to make the, you know, the, the edge of our, our big piece, maybe we want to make this a right edge. You can see it kind of straightened out. And we get a full preview of what these pieces are going to look like. So if we go to our find options, this is really cool. So find, we can put in essentially a spacing, and Exact Flat's going to automatically find the edge that corresponds with the edge that we selected. So you can see we get that little uh, that little preview there and uh, much easier to align our pieces. We don't have to remember uh, you know, which pieces go with which. Okay, so once we're ready, we can hit this Export Pattern button. And we have full options here. We can split our panels for cutting. So in this case, we're going to split into six foot sections. Hit OK. It's automatically going to split for us. Okay, so you can see it's automatically creating a number of pieces. And we can go right to our marker view. And we can see how it's, uh, it's going to look um, on our cutting table. All right, so we go to our marker view. And there they are. They're all set out. They're all on our markers. You know, we get full costing on it. Uh, and we can go ahead and we can send that right out uh, to a DXF. And you can see right here, we've got a, lot, a number of export options uh, for different cutting tables, uh, fully customizable um, and easy to send out. Right, so that, I mean, that's the liner process, very fast, right? So let's go ahead and create another one and we'll, we'll try out a, a cover, okay? Uh, in this particular case, uh, we're going to try use a template, right? So we've got uh, a fully featured template option as well for both covers and liners. We'll just type in a, uh, a project ID. You can see I got a little X in the corner there, so you can't make redundancies. It knows if you've already created something with a name so that you don't save over any projects. Select cover, and we can go into pool data. So here, again, we've got our full list of uh, customizable templates. Right, we'll just go with a rectangle for now. Pop in a couple dimensions. You know, maybe we make this, I don't know, 16 by 32. Okay. And we can go over to our cover. So now we can choose our cover type. In this case, we'll use a 61 inch green mesh. We can choose things like our spring types, what kind of deck it's going to be. We can choose our overlap and our strap length. When we're ready, we can hit OK. And again, that automation from Pool Pattern Pro uh, is going to kick in. So it's going to put in our grid system. Right, you can see there. So there's our strap sketch. Okay, we can manipulate that using our grid adjustment tool. Right, so if we want to move it up or down, not a problem. It also uh, automatically scales across the vertical strap, so you can see that the uh, the right and the left are automatically aligned with our cover. Right, we can say accept. So there you go. So we have our uh, we have our grid lines already on our uh, on our cover, and we can go ahead and cut and strap that. So that's going to go place all of our strapping for us. Again, that's that automation, right? slice our pieces up and give us all of our strapping. Right? Now we can go through, we can add any strapping that we need to. In this case, maybe we want to add some strapping on the corners. So we can select all the corners. We can hit add strap in one direction and it's going to go through and it's going to add all of those straps for us. It's there, almost done. Perfect. Right? And now uh, what we can do is uh, we can go to the exact flat process, right? So we've, we've kind of got all of our strapping, we've got all of our anchors, 
uh, and now we can start uh, just separating out these pieces so we can send them to the cutter, right? Same process, select the piece, hit enter. That's all that we're doing. You can see we've got four pieces there, we can accept that. Uh, same process, left to right. Now we're gonna apply a material to it. Uh, in this case, we'll just apply, a, let's apply a quick pool cover material, right? Now in this case, because it's flat, we don't have to use the flattener. We can go right to our pattern, right? You can see we've got our flat pattern and we can send this thing uh, essentially right out to the marker. There's our markers there. And again, we can go through the, uh, the export process. So With overlaying all the pen lines, of course. Of course, absolutely. Once, once it gets exported. Absolutely. So very fast, right? Both, uh, both liners and covers. It's a very fast process. All right. So uh, now that you've seen the process, if you haven't seen that before, or if you have seen, you got a little bit of a refresh, uh, more into you know, the improvements and enhancements uh, for the next iteration of PoolWorks. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get better at it, I promise. Uh, Pool Pattern Pro. Uh, so uh, the first thing we want to go over is, uh, is liner and cover uh, workflows. So we're going to jump back into SolidWorks. Uh, and we'll go over the, uh, some of the cover uh, enhancements first. So if we go ahead and, again, we'll start up a new cover. Uh, and in this particular case, I'm going to use a Pool Measure Profile. I'm just going to pop in the Pool Measure Pro cover. So, uh, hey. I, yeah. Uh, Scotty, just wanted to mention that, um, you know, we're, we're reading in these Pool Measure Pro files, and just to let you know, uh, Pool Measure Pro is a business partner with us, and, um, you know, we fully support any new automation they're going to bring out, and uh, we work very closely with these folks. So um, if you're a customer of Pool Measure Pro, you're, you're going to be a customer of ours, too, because uh, we read in their data. It, it, it's the best way to create a pool or a liner, right? Or a, a liner or a cover using their files. Right? Sorry, I just had to yeah. throw that in there for you. Yeah, folks. no problem. Absolutely. Uh, so, and again, by reading in that pool measure profile, I mean, the big advantage is here. I pre-populated um, all of my, uh, my project ID and any custom properties that I have in the file. As well as I, I have the, the file naming. Actually, just go back because I know that's important to one of our uh, listeners out there. Um, we have uh, we've developed two other ways of uh, controlling the file naming. Absolutely. Right. So those are on their, their final uh, final touches that we're trying to get uh, ready later in the, this month. Um, but incorporating flexibility so you don't need to follow the you know the the way that we set it up in the beginning. So we have a couple other options, and uh, you'll be delighted to, delighted to know that it's flexible and also can keep you more organized if you like as well. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so we, again, if we go into a pool data, um, you know, we've got all of our AB points brought in from that pool measure profile. Uh, we also have all of our cover options uh, brought in as well. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit create pool, uh, which is going to uh, make our cover for us. Um, and uh, one of the first enhancements on the cover side that I wanted to talk about um, was the more flexibility with our grid adjustment. Um, so we did have um, a number of clients that wanted to, you know, be able to position the grid a little bit more uh, flexibly. Flexibly? Uh, we'll go with it. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Sure, I'm, I'm going to own it. Um, uh, so we came up with this option uh, under our, our adjust grid profile. Pause up here. Uh, called float grid. So what this is going to do is if I select float grid and I close the uh, the tool lock or the uh, prompt, it's going to automatically pop me into my grid sketch, and you're going to notice the whole grid is blue, which means that I can move this now wherever I want. Right, it's not fully uh, fully uh, constrained. You know, I can also easily add in you know a quick fixed point here if I wanted to rotate this any way that I wanted to. Right, maybe I want to line this up around there. Right, I can quickly get rid of that fixed constraint, and now I can whoops grab this and I can move this anywhere I want. So a lot more flexibility. We can now, you know, easily apply constraints inside of the grid, um, you know, without having to worry about over constraining or anything like that. Uh, so a pretty big enhancement on the, on, on the grid side, um, you know, and just allowing you really more flexibility, more functionality uh, to be able to place those grids anywhere that you'd like. Okay. Uh, and actually, let me close this out. Uh, another another great enhancement as well 
uh, is uh, using being able to read in custom properties. So uh, this is more from if you're starting with a, a dig print. So if I start just a new file, because again, there, you know, there's a multitude of different ways that we can create pools inside of uh, Pool Pattern Pro. Uh, so if we um, just quickly uh, run a, a quick dig print here, right? So we'll start a quick sketch. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to drag in a dig dig print block that I've got here. Okay, so let's say we wanted to make this into a cover, right? Uh, so we've we've sketched out a perimeter, and let's say that we applied, you know, a few properties to this. So maybe we put in our dealer as Javelin. Uh, maybe our customer. We're going to bring this to Acme Pools, right? Sure. Uh, and say we've got a designer. Say it's Scott the humble designer, right? Uh, so we apply this, right? So now we've got those custom properties in here. But they might also be part of our pool works workflow, right? Where we enter our properties when we uh, when we create our cover. Well, now if I go ahead if I go ahead and tag this sketch, and I go to start a new pool, those values are automatically read in. Okay, so there's no need to re-enter these values. Uh, anything that you put in there before starting the pool process uh, from the manual tag side is automatically uh, read in to uh, to the to the uh, pool pattern pro wizard. Uh, one, th one thing else I'll mention as well is that if um, if Scott would have saved that file before he hit this, he wouldn't even be, um, or I wouldn't check the project ID, right? Is that uh, true? Or I'm, I tested that myself. It's true. Yes. <laughs> so basically what we took out is some uh, redundant uh, or some unnecessary checking just to make sure you're not, you know, mashing the keyboard if you need to kind oh, of absolutely. And, and, do, and again, do just that, so. adding to speed, right? Yeah. I'm not sure if you're going to go over this one later. Are you going to go through over those two buttons? Uh, there that are, that oh, are yeah. in there? Okay. Oh, I'll, yeah. I'll let you save those later then. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, so that's kind of what that, those, those are kind of the, the, the bigger enhancements on the, uh, on the cover side. Uh, on the liner side, uh, we now, and actually taking that button in, uh, the, the button that Eric was talking about. So if we go to, to start a new pool, um, and you know, let's say we started a, a template, um, and we want to be able to bring in information from another pool, right? Maybe we have a pool that, uh, that we created where maybe we just want to tweak a few dimensions. Um, we now have the option to import previous pool data. So I can, we can bring in uh, the pool data, in this case, we can say it's from a rectangle. It's going to bring in the uh, all of the, the file naming structure. It's going to be able to tell you uh, what it is. Uh, actually, in th this particular case, this one was a cover, um, which is fine because it's going to apply to liners and covers. Um, but it's automatically going to bring in your dimensions here, right on the on the on the cover side. Oops, actually, oops. Sorry. Let's try that again. New pool. Use template and bring in that. There we go. So again, it's going to automatically bring in those dimensions, right? So we can just tweak them. You know, maybe it's just a slight change. But the big thing is it's going to also have all of your presets already done. So, uh, you know, all of your deck overlap, your strap overlap, your cover type that you've, that you've selected for this so that you can quickly bring in that, bring in that, uh, that project, uh, tweak a couple dimensions, hit create pool, done, right? Uh, so it's, it's a very, uh, very uh, fast Right, which is which is, I guess, kind of the overlying. Uh, that is. That's uh, what we're shooting for. Fast, right? Um, another great enhancement as well is, uh, you know, let's say that again we were doing a pool measure pro and say we were going to do a, a quick liner here, right? Um, now, when we bring in our pool data. Uh, we get a full live preview of what the outline of our pool is going to be, right? So as we enter our A-B points, um, it's actually building the pool for us. Uh, another great enhancement as well, as you can see, we've got labels here as well. So we can choose, you know, how many points our labels show up in. Maybe it's every four points, maybe it's every three points. Uh, and when we click on an A-B point, it's actually highlighted for us as well. So it's much easier for us to find that point. We also have uh, an option to see 
kind of a full screen of our pool too, just to make sure that it looks the way that we expect it to look before we go and actually uh, run it through the creation process, right? Sometimes you miss a decimal point on a navy point or something like that and it's off in space, and now it's gonna be really easy uh, to figure out uh, not only if that's the case, but which point it is, and we can go back and we can change it. Oh, maybe the, don't forget the flip option there, that, that was important as well, right? No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, another, uh, and actually on that point, uh, we've also uh, added in uh, feet and inches options to all prompts. So there were some prompts before, and actually you saw it better on the cover side. Uh, let me start with, actually, you know what, let me start with a template. All this we want. All right, so you've always had the, the feet and inches here, but again, if we go maybe 16, 32. All right, on the cover side, we also have, have included that feet and inches in every prompt that has uh, essentially a, a dimensional input. So you have now have the choice of um, feet and inches if you're comfortable with it. And again, you know, we can change that in a number of ways. We could say one space six. Right, which is going to give us one foot six inches. Uh, you know, we could say 1.5, uh, which is going to give us 1.5 feet. Um, a number of different ways that we can enter it, but you, it's a lot more robust. And whichever way you're used to entering your dimensions, you can now do inside of Pool Pattern Pro. Yeah, and the same thing goes for liners. Like the common um, one was when you're doing those dig prints, so you have the perimeter, and then you need to put in the slope uh, or the shallow and depth and the the depth and whatnot. Those in the past were inches, so those have also the same sort of dialogue. You can now do feet and inches there as well. Absolutely. Okay, so a lot, a lot of great content, right? So with the liners, we've got the float grid. Uh, we can read in our, uh, our properties from, uh, from any kind of dig print that we've already created. Um, you know, we've got uh, the being able to import previous pool data, um, being able to very visually see the feedback on our AB points. Right? Being able to enter everything in feet and inches uh, to get to our final result. So, uh, so a lot of great enhancements uh, through those processes. So now we want to get into more of the template automation. Right? So we have been working very heavily on, on our template editor and using our templates. Uh, and we've, uh, we've retool retooled a lot of stuff uh, in templates that we really think that you guys are going to like. Um, so the first big one uh, for templates is that we, we've actually split um, our template folders. So instead of having everything in one template area, we have specific cover templates and we have specific uh, liner templates. Um, just because we wanted to do different things with, uh, with the two different templates. That, that you, might, you may want to do one thing to a cover that, that you don't want to do to a liner. Uh, so starting off with a template, if we go with a cover template, uh, we can call this whatever we want, maybe a rectangle if I can spell properly. Sure. Right. And again, we can bring in any of our custom properties. We can also import our custom properties, and that's always been there, right? We could always import from an ERP or from a list, um, you know, if we've got it in, in, a, in an Excel file or CSV or something to, pro uh, to propagate these properties. Uh, but the big thing here is you might notice right beside rectangle, I've got a little bit of drop down. And actually, before I get there, We've also got this handy filtering option here as well. So I can very quickly search if I want to have a rectangle. I can very quickly search for, you know, any template at all. And this is really handy, especially if you've got a lot of templates, right? These are the default ones, but of course you're going to make your own. You're going to make your own custom templates. Uh, you might have a list a mile long. So that, that filter is very handy. Um, but we now have the option of adding in stairs to all of our covers, okay? Um, so there are some that come with defaults. Right, so you can see we've got different stair positions, but these are also fully customizable, right? So in the case of this oval, so this oval actually I customized. You can see we can put in our own custom picture here, uh, and even customize our stair locations, right? So you can see for the side stairs in our oval, we want to be able to you know offset this arc length depending on how far up the arc the, the stairs are. So it's a, it's a very robust, um, and of course uh, you know we can add in all of our um, all of our uh, our X, Y, and, and Z or Z, depending on where you're, you're, you're looking from, um, 
for our stair dimensions. So how wide, uh, how far, in this case, up the arc is it? Um, you know, how deep are the steps? Um, you'll also notice as well, and you might have noticed this right from the start, that I've got this orange here. So I'm getting uh, kind of visual feedback uh, right inside of, uh, of Pool Pattern Pro so that if I'm missing a dimension, it's very, very clear, right? So that's, that's something new that, new that we added as well. Uh, so that it's it's a lot more difficult to to miss uh, any any dimensions or anything like that when you're. Able oh, to we even stopped time. you from proceeding, right? Yes, so we're, yeah, we're, we're validating right, that all the dimensions are are put in now, and we're changing the color just so it's you know visual, uh, to make sure you don't miss any. No, absolutely, um, and you know we've also kind of retooled the way that we've actually put together the templates as well. Um, so I, I'm just going to show you kind of an example here. Oh, pop our PDM in there. In, in a nutshell, when we started working on, on the templates, we recognized that there was so many different variations that in the past we were like, well, just make a different template, make a different template, but that adds up, right? Absolutely. So the idea is that can we combine some of those common options um, together into a single template so that if you do need to make a tweak, it's only one template that you're changing. Oh, right? Absolutely. So you can see in this case, it's, we just have a, a lazy L. Um, and actually all the features that we need are in here uh, they're just suppressed, right? So Poolworks is taking, Pool Pattern Pro is taking uh, advantage of, um, you know, the automation and, and already having the geometry uh, inside the model. So if, you know, if I wanted to see a stair, I could just unsuppress it, you know, and the stair would show up, right? And we're just controlling the sizing and the positioning. But another cool thing as well is that we also have uh, radii, right? So, you know, say you want to apply a radius uh, to a cover, you know, all of that, those features are in there. Right, and even uh, you know using the power of SolidWorks and the feature tree and, and kind of the order of operations. Even if I wanted to put some quarter quarter uh, yeah, sorry corner radii, there we go. We can unsuppress that. And you'll notice that just the pool has has radii attached to it. Right. If I drag that above my cover, now they both do. Right. So you have a lot of flexibility uh, with these liners as well, um, and it's it's very easy. A lot of times it's just a just a drag and drop. So some of the, the options there with whether those corners uh, get, uh, we also have chamfers in there, get suppressed or unsuppressed. Those, um, uh, our, pl our plan is to work those into the templates mm -hmm. as well. We're not, uh, we're not quite there yet, but it's, pretty, it's very quick to manipulate them Absolutely. afterwards within the, yeah, within so the design. A little bit of a sneak peek. Yeah. <laughs> But in, in a nutshell, um, I guess my advice there is that if you have, um, if you've invested time to create your own templates, if they're, if they're working great uh, currently and, and everything's perfect, great, just keep using them. Um, if there's some templates that, uh, or maybe the next off season, if you're looking to maybe simplify some of the, some of it, um, there's that opportunity now to kind of bring, take advantage of some of this new functionality and eliminate some of the, the redundancy. Um, so there's a new modeling technique that we, that we've, uh, came up with that we felt was the most robust way to go and create that model of the of that pool design and template. Okay. All right. So uh, you know, again, just to just to kind of go over what we saw there, um, you know, pretty pretty big enhancements on the template side. We can uh, we can add in uh, you know the incorporation of stairs with covers, um, being able to have that uh, that validation to make sure that you can't proceed until you've entered all relevant dimensions, right? To make sure that we uh, we capture all of the information that we need to capture. Um, you know, and uh, and having a little bit more robust options with our uh, with our template creation. Okay, so uh, now onto some of the uh, the documentation enhancements uh, for for Pool Pattern Pro. So if we open up, uh, let's just open up Pool here, or Pool Cover in this case. So I'm not sure if you noticed, because it's very subtle, um, but we have this new pool drawing button over here under, uh, under our Pool Pattern Pro toolbar. Uh, and this button does a couple things, right? So the, the, what we wanted to do is we wanted to make it easier to get, uh, and not even so much easier, because it's already pretty easy inside of SolidWorks, but faster to get to the, uh, the drawing creation process. Uh, so what this pool drawing button does is if there's already an existing drawing with this part, it's going to open that drawing up for you right away. Okay? Uh, if the drawing doesn't exist, it's pulling off of whatever drawing template that you want and it's going to automatically create a drawing for you. So let's try this. Let's hit it. No, 
pop us into a drawing, and it's going to automatically pop, um, in this case, our cover on the drawing. Right? So uh, one thing uh, that's happening in the background here is that it's actually auto-scaling uh, our view for us. So we don't have to go and pick a scale. Um, it's going to automatically size that to our sheet. Um, and you're going to notice as well that uh, it's bringing in all of our custom properties as well. Right? So any, any custom properties that we've attached to our part that we've also put into our, uh, our drawing template, they're all coming through so we don't have to double enter or triple enter anything. We enter it one time and it passes right through the entire process. You know, uh, important to note here, um, at the bottom you, you can see your strap length and your anchor count. Um, if this is a traveler, a shop traveler went to the shop floor and they had to pull parts, you're getting an accurate count off this automatically. It's not relying on a CAD operator to count the number of anchors. So they know exactly what to pull. It's based on the automation inside of uh, Pool Pattern Pro. So right off the bat, you know, we're saving you um, human errors that, that could occur in your current system, right? No, so again, absolutely. Just streamlining that process. Actually, uh, maybe it's a good time to show those uh, bill of materials and things like that, Scotty, for the material usage and things like that. No, absolutely. And uh, and and just before we get there, and uh, I know Chris mentioned it, and and this is this is a big new enhancement as well. But you will notice if we zoom into the bottom here that we do have an anchor count. So uh, Pool Pattern Pro is now actively counting up all of the anchors. It's doing it dynamically. So if you get rid of them, if you add them. Uh, it's keeping track of all of that just so that we can use it anywhere in our drawing that we want to. Maybe we want to put it on a label, maybe we want to put it on a production drawing, maybe we want to put it on a quote drawing, uh, what have you. That is now a custom property uh, directly inside of SolidWorks. Yeah, in the in the past, just to clarify, we've been uh, working with the exact flat portion on the hardware, which uh, still could very well be the the way that we'd recommend for other reasons. But if you're just looking for a, for the count, we uh, we've now incorporated that earlier in the process, right, based on those uh, on those anchor sketches, those sketch points. No, absolutely. Okay. And again, we can always use uh, use our exact flat tools as well, right? So if we wanted to have a costing uh, table, you know, we can always use our exact flat um, drawing details, or a drawing table, sorry. Um, and that's going to give us, you know, the, our full cost on straps and the full length. It's going to give us our full cost on all of our anchors. And it's also going to give us the... Uh, the unit total, like like Eric was mentioning, mm -hmm. uh, and you know we also have a you know maybe we want to know how much material is being used on this entire pattern, right? So we can use a material table, um, you know, and that's going to tell us in this case it's a hundred and seventy one point four one seven uh, feet per inches squared, right? So uh, you know it's very easy to keep track of the exact amount of uh, material that we're using, um, and of course using all of our callouts as well, right? So we can use our piece callouts so we know which piece is which. Right, as well as you know, material callouts and, and edge callouts and everything like that. So you you do still have um, those very robust automated uh, drawing tools uh, through ExactFlat as well. Sounds good. Awesome, thanks, Tony. All right. So it looks like, uh, well, just to go over uh, the drawing enhancements again, that pool drawing button, right? Getting you to that drawing stage, automatically placing your view, automatically scaling your view. Uh, it's taking a lot of steps out of the uh, the manual drawing creation process, right? And of course, you know, bringing in that anchor count so that it's it's more dynamic. You can use it anywhere that you want inside of your drawing, and however many sheets that you want to use it in, right? So it does look like I I, I was a little bit fast. No, I it's think we're uh, we're good. Yeah, it's because I'm on, it's it's because I'm enthusiastic. There's more liners to be made, more covers to be made. That's so it. I know you got yeah, yeah, I know you, I know you guys back. are busy. Um, so at this point, we're going to um, uh, open the floor for any questions. So we'll start with anybody. Anybody, if you wanted to type in any questions, so we'll go through that. Uh, we'll just take a quick um, couple minutes as we're reading those questions, then we'll come come back online to just sit tight, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and answer some questions. Mm -hmm.